personal items, uh, much of which we tend to take up with gifts. Oh, here they come. There they are. Nick Haig, commander of Crew 9, with his crewmate, Alexander Gorbanov. It's a big moment. Family and friends seeing their crew members. This way to space. Suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they'll have a chance here to say a few words with those who are closest to them. Standing at a distance, of course, because the astronauts are quarantined for two That's weeks right, yeah. prior to liftoff. And their closest members of the family have been quarantining with them, but uh, as we are actually getting ready to get on the rocket, we are taking all of the precautions possible. What's this like for you, Zena, seeing your former crewmates in this moment? Oh, it's, gosh, at the same time, it is absolutely joyful and it is also surreal. It's really fun seeing people I know so well in their suits, ready to go. I know firsthand how well prepared they are. They've been doing not only all of the normal training for a mission like this, but additionally working really hard to uh, make that final transition into these roles that they weren't originally planned for. I know that they're ready and gosh, it's just, it's amazing. I know how many people have put a ton of work into this. I'm ready to see them get to the International Space Station and get going on a long expedition. And I'll have a few minutes here to say hello, say some words with their family. There's Haley letting them know it's time to move towards the Teslas. And we'll hopefully have one extra chance for families to come up to the window of the Teslas as they're ready to roll off to the pad. A few final cheers, some photos. And now they are getting into the Tesla. And as uh, Zena said, the doors will close, the windows will open, and They'll have a few more moments with uh, their That's family right. and loved ones. You can see them hooking back up to that cooling umbilical connected to their little personal briefcases. Get them some air on their way to the launch pad. Switching from the handheld to the in-car system, right? Uh, the handheld system is actually in the back behind their ah, seats. so it's all yeah, part of it. Okay. Yeah, but they... Uh, ditch the little cooling suitcase as they walk out, just less to carry. Gotcha. This moment is such a mix of emotions. I know families are all at once so proud of their loved one. It's also incredibly difficult to know that it's going to be a long time before you see them again. Of course, we have a lot of great communications assets. It's really easy to stay in touch, but it is nevertheless really challenging to be a family member on the other side of this. And as a crew member, you are feeling so excited for this launch that's about to happen. You're so ready for it, as this license plate says. They are ready for it indeed. And, yeah. and you've been down there on the ground as an astronaut support person with these crew members as they've been getting ready to. You were you were there for crew four, That's right? right, yeah, I was the support person for crew four. I was a backup crew member for crew four as well. I've been on most sides of this, uh, this barrier here. I've been there. Uh, as a support person riding in the Teslas with the crew to the pad, I've been a family escort. I've been there as effectively the family member for a crew member. So I've seen it from a lot of different sides. It's really, each one is challenging and humbling. So I know firsthand all the work that goes into something like this. And they are off. 
on their way to Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. You can see the crew driving away from the Neil A. Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building, and this will begin a roughly 20-minute drive with a full security escort across NASA's Kennedy Space Center, including the Vehicle Assembly Building, and there they are, the onboard camera. I just want to follow up on a note that you said. You've seen this from so many sides that by the time you get to space, you will probably be <laughs> the most highly trained astronaut <laughs> to ever uh, do a crew launch. Well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> I will be ready for it as well. That's for sure. All right. Well, while we've got the astronaut and cosmonaut in their vehicles headed to the pad, let's hear from them now. And let's start with Commander Nick Haig, Nick Haig who spent five months in Iraq and 2004 in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Let's listen more from the test pilot from Kansas. 